Welcome back guys, I'm Caleb and today we're going to learn a little bit more about arrays and objects in JavaScript. Um, let me just go ahead and jump back here if we go over to uh, JavaScript. We are on the, is it the 6th? Yeah, data structures, there we go. So we're learning about data structures today and we're reviewing arrays is it going to be our first little exercise of lessons. So um, once again, if you're not already in full screen, go ahead and go in full screen. And if you're not at CodeAcademy.com, make sure to head over to Code Academy. You know, Code Academy is great and awesome. So, you know this. You already know about arrays. So we won't spend a lot of time going over them. Go ahead and check out the past exercises on arrays if you need a refresher. The instructions are create an array list or create an array called list in the editor. It can contain any data you want. Make sure it has at least three elements. So, to create an array, just to refresh you guys, is we're just gonna say var to create a variable, and it wants us to say list because that's the array it wants us to create. Now, open little box, and we're gonna say the first or the zero element is going to, going to be one. Actually, let's just say zero. 1 and 2 because remember guys arrays start with 0 not 1 so if we go ahead and save this we're gonna get the green light and let's go on to the next exercise now good access by offset do you remember how to access an element of an array by offset with the bracket notation check the hint if you need help so log the third element of the languages array to the console Make sure to do this by accessing the third element's index. So as you can see here, we have this languages variable, but it's an array. So we have a languages array. And the very first slot, which is the zeroth slot, is HTML. And let me just go ahead and create a comment here and so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So remember, like I said in the um, previous exercise, that we start with zero. And then CSS is going to be the first little box really zero is a box first CSS is the second box but the way that JavaScript counts it it's saying it's the first box now JavaScript is the second little box of data Python which is an awesome coding language hopefully we'll get into um, a video series with that later on in the near future Python is going to be the third box of data and Ruby is going to be our last or our fourth box of data. Now, it wants us to console.log the third element. So the third element is JavaScript. But in, you might have think, well, hey, that would be easy. We just say three. But if you see down here, if we were to say three, that would print out Python. And it wants the third element, which is JavaScript. So we have to put two instead of three. So we just console dot log languages and little box and then two and then put our semicolon and this will print out JavaScript and hopefully we'll get the green light in which we do because we are amazing we are just phenomenal programmers yes me and you are oh shit damn did not mean to do that okay good work if you remember arrays have a property in common with strings, they can both use the dot length method. When you call the dot length on an array, it returns the number of elements that array has. Under your existing code, which I failed to have shown you guys because I clicked the reset code, unfortunately, um, log the number of elements in languages to the console. So I'm just go ahead and just go back and submit my code again and go back okay wow okay so it's still gone so let me just go back and copy this again sorry about this guys okay so here we go and paste it in here so now we're back to normal now what we're going to do is um, call pretty much the same exact thing so console.log because we want it to print out to the console but this time we're instead of telling it to print out a, um, a box uh, or within the array, we're going to print out the array's length. And to do this, we just say uh, languages dot length, and then a semicolon. And this is going to print out. Let's see, one, two, three, four. It's going to print out five, hopefully. And as you can see here, we got the JavaScript from earlier, 
and then our dot length method is going to print out five as you can see there so we got it correct let's go on to the next little lesson they have irritating over an array by combining all of these ideas for or with a for loop you can iterate over the language's array and print out each element in turn. Go ahead and use a for loop to log each element of the language's array to the console. Check the hint if you need a reminder of the for, loops, uh, for loop syntax. So this is going to be fairly easy and you might be like oh well how are we going to do this? You know this, this is going to be hard and if you think about it it may be hard to grasp at first, but once I show you how to set up your for loop, you'll be like, oh, that's really easy. And um, there's different kind of for loops. I, I honestly don't think Code Academy um, covers the advanced for loop, which is essentially just like a for loop. But instead of modifying, uh, modifying uh, the... Like, if you were to use a normal for loop like this, I'll, I'll just show you. So var x equals 0. Oh, 0. And we want it to set it to zero because we're going to reference this x into our languages, and we want the very first spot is zero, so that's why we want this set to zero. X is less than um, languages languages dot length, and what this will pretty much say x is less than one, two, three, four, five. So x is less than five, in other words, and we're just going to say x plus plus because each time we loop, we want it to add one and right now what we're going to do is console dot log and we're gonna say languages and we're gonna put the little box again and but this time we're gonna pass an X and you're like oh that's really clever I understand it because what we're saying is whenever we are when we first loop X is going to equal to zero so what it's going to do is going to be like, okay, x equals 0 is 0 less than 5. Well, of course, okay, so we're going to go down here and run our code, which is console.log, languages, and then the very first box, which is 0. And that's going to print out HTML. Now we're going to add 1 to it, and then we're going to come back here. Now x equals 1 is 1 less than 5? Well, of course. So now we're going to come back to languages, and we're going to print out the very first slot, which is CSS and so on and so on until we get the Ruby. But what I was talking about with the advanced for loop was, um, I know you can do it in Java, I'm not really sure if you can do it in JavaScript, I'm, I'm sure you can, but instead of um, trying to modify the um, variables, an advanced for loop, which you can go on out on your own and uh, research this, um, it just reads through the array, and it's a hell of a lot faster than using a normal for loop like this, but I'm not going to show you guys, I'm just going to throw it out there to see if you guys want to research it and uh, look into it a little bit further. But let's go ahead and save and submit the code and see if it works. So sweet, as you can see in our uh, console we got HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, and Ruby. So we got it correct and congratulations you finished this project. Which is kind of weird because the way they got this new interface going on, they've, they're renaming everything so projects are now lessons and lessons are now exercises it's all different it's all mixed up so guys if you like this um, video make sure to leave a like rating if it really helped you guys uh, reviewing some of the array syntax or if you guys just like oh wow I love this guy he makes pretty damn good video videos so uh, <laughs> if you ever get stuck just leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe alright guys until ne next time have a uh, good day <laughs> I've been Caleb bye